Hey everyone, today I got Credence Dengre. Credence, yes, that's his real name. Okay, it's not a nickname. <laughs> uh, and it is after what you think it is, <laughs> actually knowing the story. So, Cre so Credence is in, uh, you know, has a startup. He'll kind of like, go through it without me trying to explain uh, because I got a big picture view. I don't have the detailed view. So, Credence, kind of uh, tell us how, you know, your history and what you're doing right now, like where you came from to what you're doing now. Yeah, absolutely. You want me to start with the history of the name? Well, sure. Yeah, go into a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> uh, well, the story for my name is that my parents had picked out uh, a name for me. It was supposed to be Cheyenne, and then uh, I popped out with wrong parts. And uh, so they, they had to figure out something else. And apparently my aunt was in a record store at the time, picked up a CCR album, and it stuck. So, <laughs> so Credence it is. That's my name. Um, all right, so getting into, I guess, uh, you know, my background, uh, what, what gets me going, what my interests have been, and what's brought me to where I am today. I was always very passionate about engineering from a young age, and I wanted to be an engineer because you want to solve problems in the world, you know? That, I think that's what drives every engineer. You want to be able to be a part of change, create opportunities, create new things. Mm -hmm. And I followed that passion for the, for the longest time until I, I really got out into the workforce. And I, I realized that when you're working in engineering, for the most part, you're making somebody else's dreams come true or you're a cog in the machine and you're not really able to exercise that creativity, uh, that flexibility and that ability to make that change that you, that, that you wanted to be able to make. And when I saw that and I felt very constrained, of course I wanted to break out. And most people who break out end up becoming entrepreneurs. I had a couple other businesses that I'd worked on before and just to get my feet wet into entrepreneurship. And when you do that, when you start off in entrepreneurship, you really start familiarizing yourself with the monetary system, with economics, with finance, because these are very important tools to understand as an entrepreneur. And then you start seeing where uh, the problems lie. And as an engineer, when you see those problems that, that exist within in the financial system, uh, you you want to be able to fix them and uh, and also one of the things that started to become of interest for me was real estate because of course it's the the largest asset class that's out there and it's an asset class that really has true intrinsic value and I, I came across this this mechanism that uh, had been used by very high net worth individuals to uh, re really re reduce their debt but at the same time increase their wealth and I, I identified this as a, a real opportunity that if we were able to take these tools, make them understandable or accessible to the masses, then we could really make that positive impact that I always wanted to make as an engineer. Got, got you. So with that now, so I guess, yeah, tell, uh, tell us how, uh, you know, you can help others and who do you like to connect uh, with this new startup? That's probably, that's obviously your concentration now. Uh, what you created so yeah could you you know briefly give description and people can reach out to you if they're kind of want to get uh, get more information or want to connect with you sure yeah so i guess just to briefly touch on what the company itself is and what we do as i mentioned it was you know in real estate uh, we identified this opportunity and it's a, a re really an opportunity uh using these financial tools that have been accessible by, by the high net worth but not understood or accessible to the average person. Not to say that it can't be, uh, it's just that most average people don't necessarily have the financial acumen, access to credit, uh, or even if they did, the, the discipline uh, and the ability to, to carry out these processes on a month to month basis. So we, we ultimately we automated these and our, our platform uh, provides a fully integrated real estate management platform. And it doesn't matter if it's just a single house that you live in, you've got one property in your portfolio and it's your principal residence, or you have multiple properties that are rental properties. And, and what we do is for the average income individual, we automate these financial tools. We ultimately save them potentially up to 40% of the total cost of paying off their mortgage and up to 80% of the time spent paying it off. So that's a significant cost savings. You know, people who thought they were gonna pay off their home in 30 years are able to pay it off in six years. 
you know, $200,000 worth of interest gets brought down to about $40,000 worth of interest. So huge savings. And, and then once that person's got their first property completely paid off, uh, we take their equity, we, we put that towards pre-qualification for additional income generating properties. Right. And then we start building them an actual portfolio. So you see people like, um, uh, you know, people like Grant Cardone, uh, who, who gets, who's got a great following. Uh, he, he gets a lot of people interested and excited about getting into real estate, uh, talking about how, how it's a great opportunity to increase your wealth. And, uh, you know, he really gets people excited, very interested. Ultimately, at the end of the day, he's managing the, the whole system. He's, he, he's got a team that, that does it for them. And, and you're investing into him almost like a REIT. He says it's not a REIT, but it's similar. It's, it's like a, a privately managed REIT, right? right. Um, and, and what we're doing is we're giving people access to those tools where they can do it themselves. Gotcha. So you don't have to invest through somebody else. You actually become the master of your own destiny. Gotcha. And, and then and these are properties you directly own 100%. Gotcha. Awesome. So, Sorry. yeah, right. Yeah, no, that's perfectly say, explained. The real key here is financial mobility. So to the average person who thought that they were going to just own one house uh, over a 30-year period, 30 year period of time, uh, we, we allow them over that same period of time to not only own their house outright, but to actually grow that portfolio of income generating properties. Awesome. So, well, like you said, yeah, reach out to him. Um, I'll be posting, obviously, if you're watching this on either YouTube or LinkedIn, I'll be posting those links for his website. There'll be videos kind of showing how this system works. Obviously, this intrigues you. Reach out to him. Hey, if you're not, I mean, yeah, if you're an investor or even owning your own house, you got to obviously at least look at it and see if it really does work. And, you know, it helps you. It so, really works. Yeah, there you go. So, you know, reach out to him, find out, you know, take a chance. Um, awesome, Credence. So let's get on to last two questions. Obviously, you've been a serial entrepreneur. So what inspires you to get up and do what you do every day? Ah, it's fun. It's exciting. You know, when you, when you are, are building something uh, from the ground up, um, you get very, very into it. Uh, even as a kid, I, I talked about my passion uh, for engineering. I'd always start working on little projects. Uh, and not only would I, I, I build things, uh, I didn't even have a garage. I was living in an apartment. My, my living room became my garage. Mm -hmm. uh, I was always working on, on little projects there, but I didn't just use, like, bring in a, a lathe or, or, or whatever to, to uh, make these things. I would make my, my machinery to start uh, from scratch. So it was, it was, it was quite... Um, uh, quite fun. So anyways, I, I always get really into projects uh, and I, I like to, you know, it's just every day something new. There's always unforeseen, uh, um, unforeseen events. I, I don't necessarily want to call them hindrances. Sometimes there's things that come along that actually really help you out. Some things that uh, you don't expect that you wish you wouldn't have to deal with, but you have to deal with. And that just makes it exciting. And uh, it's, it's that excitement that keeps me going. Uh, it's that it just keeps life interesting. Life's not necessarily meant to be easy. Life's not meant to be, um, it's also, it, it, and it also doesn't need to be difficult either. It's just, it's unexpected. Every moment's unexpected. And uh, that's, that's what keeps it exciting and worth living. That's all I can say, really. Awesome. Well, with the uh, stuff you've done so far, you, um, you know, I know you're into personal development, read, bo read books and all. So what's the one tip you can share that has helped you? I mean, a recent tip or, I don't know, lifelong trip tip man, might be uh, that has helped you that can help others. I'm between two. Uh, one of them is throw caution to the wind and... Uh, and, and screw all the things your parents said. Just make sure that you go out there and start taking chances because if you don't, then you're never going to have a life worth living. And even if you fall and, and you get hurt, you can only fall and get hurt when you're alive. So enjoy it while you can. Uh, you're, you're never going to be able to fall and get hurt once you're dead. That's, <laughs> right? So right. It's, part of, it's part of the experience of, of being alive. Uh, the, other, the other thing I, I think that's equal to that, and this is why I'm listening to you, is let go of ideas. Uh, you got to empty your mind. You have to make space for new ways of thinking, for new knowledge, 
for things you didn't understand before. And if you're always starting and addressing issues from the same mindset you, you've always had, you're never going to be able to get around the problems that you've had because you're always going to be approaching them from the same direction. So mm -hmm. I, I say as much as you possibly can, uh, try to step back, empty your mind, and just see everything in it, its unique situation for what it is in that moment in time. Awesome. That's great. Two tips. Indeed. Yeah. But uh, if, if, if you believe you live in the past, then you, that's still driving you to the future. Awesome tip. Great. All right, Credence. Uh, yeah, as I said, you know, I'll be posting all the links. So reach out to him um, if what he said uh, chimes with you and you, you're increasing, you're trying to increase your real estate portfolio far faster than you anticipated. Hey, talk to him. All right. Thanks again, Credence. Thank you very much. Good speaking to you, Roger.